Hey there, and welcome to Pro Tools Answers. In this episode, we are talking about a new, pretty amazing and perhaps overlooked feature, which is coloring your inputs, outputs, and sends. I've been playing around with it, and it looks like this is actually gonna make a huge difference to my sessions and workflows moving forward. And I think you're gonna find it quite an incredible feature yourself. My name is Alex, and as always, I'm joined by Andy and Anders. How's it going, guys? Doing good. How are you? Good. I'm freezing. It's freezing here in Tokyo. It's oh, cold really? over here, man. Yeah. It's it suddenly, it just, Tokyo remembered it was winter, and then it suddenly got cold. So do you actually get snow in Tokyo? At uh, not really. More kind of like the northern parts of the country. Tokyo snows a little bit we'll get, every other we'll get year. A, we'll get maybe a, a little bit of snow maybe two times during the winter and it'll stick maybe for a yeah. day. Without further ado, Andy, let me throw the ball over to you. And I know you've been playing around with this feature quite a lot. You, you are now the resident expert on colouring your inputs and outputs and buses and sends. What's the deal? So for me... One of the things that I always look for are the features that happen in a release that aren't the main feature. I think the, the main feature in, in 2023.12 obviously was the Dolby render, which we talked about last time. Um, but there's always the, the small ones, I think for me, are the ones that kind of find their way into all the work that I do. And there's one that I kind of wanted to talk about, and that's coloring of inputs and outputs and buses. Love that one. Uh, so it's so, so great. Here's Pro Tools. And you can see here, I've got my different stems. I've got vocals and the hook and guitars and so on and so forth. And I think <laughs> that I've got all of the outputs going to the respective stems. But if I didn't, it would be the first time I've made that mistake. And coloring is going to make that job a lot easier. So you can see here, I've got my color palette and that shows the colors as I change them. You can see the colors change for each of the individual tracks. Now I'm gonna go into the setup menu, then into IO. And you can see here that I've got my input tab. Up in the upper left-hand corner, you've got this color wheel looking thing and that's indicating the column that allows you to discern your colors. And underneath there, you've got little kind of empty blocks right now. And those are places where you could assign colors to various, in this case, inputs. So if I wanted to have my microphone one and two, I'll click here and I'll color that red. And you can see that it colors that row red. And on the second one, I'll go ahead and click that and I'll call that yellow. I noticed these are stereo paths, right? Could you color the monopaths individually? Yes, you can. Stereo paths and their associated monopaths are completely independent. By default, they derive their color from the stereo parent, but you see I can change them any way I want to. Showing colors on inputs, great. I don't think that's what I'm going to use them mostly for. Same thing with the outputs. You can color your physical outputs the same way as your inputs, but where it really shines for me is buses. You're going to find out why I'm keeping the color palette window open because I'm a person of very, very short attention span. I'm going to go to bus, my Vox sub bus. And if I take a look at that, I know that this color in here is the same as this color for my Vox subgroup. Fantastic. That's done. Andy, do you have to go into the setup IO to color uh, inputs, outputs and buses, or can you do it directly from a track? Yeah, that's one thing that is a limiting factor at this point, and the fact that you have to close the window in order to change the tracks. So those are things that are slow you down a little bit. So if I go here to my sweetener sub and I go here, you can see that it is one, two, three, four, five, six in. I would have to go into the IO setup window and I'd have to do that manually each time. It's not the end of the world, but it is one of the limiting factors here. A lot of functions and functionalities in Pro Tools will evolve over time. So I'm thinking this is probably something that will at some point change. That's just my guess. Oh, it's certainly possible. What I'm going to do now is just do a fast forward and I'll do the rest of them. So what I've done is I've colored each one of the buses feeding each one of the subgroups. I've colored it so that the colors match. You don't have to do that. You can choose any color that you want. And now... If I show all of my tracks really easily, I can take a quick look to find out where my audio is going to. So you can see here in the vocal group, 
All of these outputs are the same color as that input. Great, fantastic. You can even see in the input selector, the inputs that are being used. And now if I go through this really quickly, you can see if I've missed anything, have I so far? No, I, I did. You can see here in the base subgroup, I've got two that don't have an output. If I choose base sub, you can see that it's gonna be colored just like this. I mean, that, that was just so quick at identifying those two tracks, which I'm sure uh, was a lot easier using the colors than, than not having colors, right? Because everything would just be great. How many times have I gone to the last part of a mix to find out that, that there was one track that was going, instead of going to a subgroup, it was going to, uh, to the main output. Now, I also have my sends, and I'm gonna show something that is especially cool. So I'm gonna go back here into my IO setup and I'm using delays and reverbs. I'm gonna go here to my Vox Verb Bus, Vocal Verb Bus. And Alex, what color do you want the Vox Verb Bus to be? I'm thinking a lovely green. Okay, and a lovely green it is. Alex, I've got a Vox Delay. What do you want the delay to be? Dark green. Dark green. Okay, it's not exactly going to show this in its best light, but it will show this. So I've got a bright green and a dark green. Take a look at this. You can see here, this one is going to my Vox Verb. This bottom one is going to my Vox Delay. Bright green, dark green. That's great. But on this track, it's split because that output is being mirrored to my Vox Verb and my Vox Delay. So not only can you tell very easily which of your outputs or sends or whatever are mirrored, if you've color coded it, you can tell which are the mirrored outputs or buses. Yeah, fantastic, love that one. Super useful. And, and mm. again, I, I find myself using this now in, in absolutely every session. Um, and Anders, you mentioned uh, before when we were off camera that this has some ramifications in the world of Dolby. Yeah, for me at least, and I, and I guess uh, it will for, for a lot of people, like when you're using objects and, uh, and different food groups for those, uh, you, could, uh, you could color the, uh, the, uh, the food groups in, uh, in the renderer as well, which is fantastic. So you can easily uh, determine what, what object you're, you're messing about with by just looking at their, their, uh, the button. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's these little things that are, are so well thought through that to me are, you know, big features like Dolby are, are, I'm not minimizing that at all, but these small features save so much time and they just generally make things easier to work with. And, and, and Pro Tools adds these, um, and I don't think trumpets them quite as much as they, they should be, because there's a lot of folks that don't even realize this is out there yet. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. It's a small, big feature, or maybe a big, small feature, but it's, it's amazing. Especially for those of us who have ADD, this is going to make my sessions a lot easier to see what the hell's going on. Join the club, man. Join the club. It's been a, it, this is this has been a huge help already. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I think anything that we can do to make the workflow quicker and the the working with Pro Tools more transparent, because at the end of the day, we seem to be focusing a lot on on like the software and the hardware and the functions and the buttons. But we're, what we're really trying to do is just to make better music faster, right? It, it get into the creative flow faster. And, and this is one of those features that will really help you during the day. So thank you very much for watching today. If you like our videos, please like and subscribe. And if you want to find out more about us and get more details on our episodes, check out our main website at protoolsanswers.com. That's protoolsanswers.com. And we also have the Pro Tools Answers Inner Circle membership, where you can get access to all kinds of goodies, including master classes and access to our online communities, including Facebook and Discord. And actually, at the moment, Anders, you are running a Pro Tools 101 course for our Inner Circle members, right? Yeah, that's uh, right. And it's been so much fun. And uh, our ultimate goal is to get everyone uh, certified uh, Pro Tools specialists here. And it's a, it's a little thank you back to those who support us. And we're so very happy for you. Thank you so much. So yeah, if you want to come and say hello and interact with us, definitely 
think about joining our Inner Circle membership. But that's it for this time. We shall see you soon. See you next time. <laughs>